For more context and analysis, we bring in ABC News contributor and retired General Robert Abrams. General Abrams was an advisor to former U.S. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel during the last invasion of Ukraine and more recently was the head of U.S. forces in Korea. General, thank you so much for joining us. Just give us a general assessment, what you would say as far as the, the events that have unfolded in the past 24 hours. Well, Lindsay, as, as you know, 24 hours ago, you and I were on this exact show. You asked me what, what's, what's the indicator of, of the imminence of this attack, and, and I told you it was the closure of the airspace in eastern Ukraine. And since, we've, since that moment, we have seen a massive offensive operation uh, broadly from three general areas by Russian forces into Ukraine with really two objectives, as stated by President Putin. One is to demilitarize Ukraine, which I read to be destroy or disarm the entire Ukrainian military, and to denazify Ukraine, which I read to be to remove the free, democratically elected government of Ukraine. And they have, what they have done, what we've seen over 24 hours is a systematic military operation, first with massive missile strikes to give Russia air superiority and then air dominance, and then a large scale offensive using a variety of different means from three different directions, focused on those two things. One, destroying Ukrainian military, and two, they're headed to Kyiv to take the government out. And we know that the U.S. had airborne manned and unmanned assets flying over Ukraine for weeks, which probably helped fill in some of the intel questions. Are they still flying? And if they are, what is the chance that they get shot down or that there's an accident? Yeah, so that this is really important. Um, you know, it's, it's provided us uh, all of the intelligence that we've been able to, that the administration and NATO has been able to share to reveal Russia's plans uh, part of that came from our airborne ISR assets that have been very active. So now, based on what I've seen in open source intelligence, uh, they have been pulled out of Ukrainian airspace. Uh, about an hour ago, there was uh, an RQ-4 operating over the Black Sea, uh, but it severely degrades our ability uh, to be able to see and understand uh, what's going on on the ground in Ukraine. As far as accidents, Look, this is, um, this, this is fraught with the potential for a mistake or an accidental shoot down of a manned U.S. ISR aircraft, manned or unmanned. And it, it could be, you know, uh, someone gets a little too close to a line and a, uh, you know, an aggressive Russian pilot decides to take matters into his own hands. There is a long history of Russian Air Force in particular, conducting reckless passes uh, and so forth with U.S. aircraft operating in international airspace, that this is, you know, this is risky business, inherently risky business, but I think this is a particularly dangerous period for our ISR aircraft. And I'm sure that uh, UCOM and, and the Air Force and others are taking appropriate actions to prevent such a thing. But there is a chance, and we'll have to keep an eye on it. And Putin has been very clear about the massive risk that it would be for the world if Western troops enter Ukraine. Yet more than 7,000 additional U.S. troops have been deployed to Europe to reassure NATO allies. What's the logic behind this strategy? Well, I think the, the, the principal logic is to reinforce to our NATO allies that we are with you. The United States of America is with you. We're, we're, we're not a on the side supporter of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We are a full force supporter and we stand united with you. And, and, and it sends a powerful message. It's reassuring to not only those countries where we send those troops, but to the entire North Atlantic Treaty Organization because those countries leaders also, they've gotta, they've gotta convince their populace of how important this is. And, when they can show the U.S. leadership and the U.S. resolve by sending our sons and daughters to reinforce, um, it goes a long way in providing reinsurance throughout the entire European continent.
What's the level of concern at this point that Putin could just continue pushing west, potentially threatening uh, another NATO country? Well, Lindsay, it depends on where you sit, right? So where I am in, in Liberty, Missouri, maybe, maybe I don't have as much concern uh, as we stand back and uh, watch this unfold based on, you know, what Putin has said in terms of his objectives. But if you're a citizen of one of the three Baltic states or Romania, um, I, I suspect that there is high concern that Putin may not stop and, and, and limit his attacks into uh, other European nations, specifically NATO nations. So this is something that we'll have to keep a very close eye on. And uh, I'm certain, based on all the things that I've read, uh, that those countries, especially on the eastern flank of NATO, they are very concerned and they're watching it very closely. Yeah, I was very touched by a, a gentleman that we spoke to earlier tonight from America who's been living in Ukraine with his family. And he talked about so many people, they're not having cars. They're on their way trying to make it to Poland. But he said that many people, he saw families uh, trying to hitchhike. What can the Ukrainian government do at this point to, to try to protect its, its citizens who stayed behind, who are essentially stuck? Yeah, this is, this is a really difficult situation for the Ukrainian government. As you know, uh, the president, and I'm not second guessing President Zelensky's decisions. He uh, wanted to keep the country calm. He, he believed that there was a much less chance of a Russian all out attack that we're seeing. So they're a little bit behind the power curve to evacuate their own citizens out of the path of war. So I think as they're while the fighting is ongoing, there's nothing harder than fighting and trying to evacuate non-combatants, your citizens, at the same time. It is extraordinarily difficult. But I believe that the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people have the will and the desire, and uh, they'll, they'll find solutions. But the, the Ukrainian people are a tough, resilient people, and uh, they'll find a way. General Abrams, we thank you so much for your time and expertise. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.